Hello you lovely lots, it's Jess. I'm a business owner, a podcast host and of course a military wife running my own company from my Magnolia Mary Quarter. This week I have been chatting to the wonderful Andrea from Bees Clothing and Gifts. So yeah, I suppose in some ways it's forced me almost into finding my own thing. Um, you know, because if Matt wasn't in the military, I'd probably be doing this. But I'm really glad that I am <laughs> because I'm really enjoying it. And it's probably taken, you know, the last... We've been going just over a year now. Um, I think it's only been in the last sort of maybe three months that I've actually thought, yeah, I, I can do this. I'm, I am doing it and, you know, and I'm doing it well. <laughs> Bees Clothing and Gifts is one of those companies that is run with an awful lot of love. Andrea creates some fab merchandise that is on trend, really innovative, and most importantly, won't leave you in hot water with the intellectual property officers. She's very switched on about business and giving back, so you'll learn a lot about year one and how to add a charitable arm to commercial sales. I really hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, Andrea, and thank you so much for joining me today. So could you tell us a little bit about your company? Um, Yeah, so it actually started by mistake almost. Um, I've been self-employed on and off through the years of obviously having a husband serving and not being able to get a job. Um, I've done various things, but our youngest daughter uh, has a rare syndrome. um, And when she got her new wheelchair in April 2016, 17, I don't know what year we're on now. Um, I We couldn't find um, any wheelchair decals that we didn't have to buy in bulk, didn't have to spend 50, 60 pounds on. Um, so Matt went off to go and find some and he actually came back with a vinyl cutter and said, we're going to make our own. And it kind of went from there, really. We just then... Well, actually, we could maybe do clothing for the um, charity that helps support our, our daughter, the CDLS Foundation. Yeah, so we started to produce clothing for them and we needed a page on Facebook so people could find us. And then we were like, well, why don't we just do other stuff? So it kind of went from T-shirts to bags to stickers to decals. I just do, if I can print on it and it's not trademarked or licensed, then I will. <laughs> And you do lots of stuff for different companies. So you mentioned you do t-shirts. I've noticed you've done, you've started doing wine glasses on your Instagram. What are your most popular and who are the sorts of companies that you create stuff for? Um, I have a lot of local businesses actually. Um, and I think that's come from Instagram. Um, I'm just sort of putting myself out there locally as well. Uh, so, you know, work polo shirts, um, t-shirts, um, a lot of return customers from the CDLS foundation that buy their, CDLS t-shirts they'll come back and buy other stuff which is always good you're like a returning customer you know you're doing something right yeah so it's a complete mixed bag really um obviously some of the military wives we've had a couple of orders from camp as well but I think because I work from home although I have the same equipment sometimes some people can be a little bit um unsure you know am I real (laughs) and that sort of puts a bit of doubt in yourself as well um you know like well am I am I real am I doing it right um, but I am. And, you know, hopefully my customers would agree that they love their stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have a little bit of that when we're working from home and doing it for ourselves, is that um, sometimes it doesn't feel like a real business. But actually, the reality is that we're producing amazing things. They can see the quality of it and how brilliant it is. And actually, we all need to start changing our mindset around that and being a little bit more confident. And I think military life sort of batters it out of you slightly um I've had that in the past where I've sort of lost my way and I've spoken about that quite a lot um has military life had that effect on you or has it actually been a positive and has it helped you build your business um a bit of both really it is really hard because when you move and you're in a new area and I think being older now as well um Matt joined fairly old anyway. He was 22 when he joined and I'm two years older than him. So we were kind of out of the loop already. So it's really hard moving to a new area and finding your feet and finding that job or setting up your new business. So yeah, I suppose in some ways it's forced me almost into finding my own thing. Um, you know, because if Matt wasn't in the military, I wouldn't probably be doing this. But I'm really glad that I am because <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. 
and it's probably taken you know the last we've been going just over a year now um I think it's only been in the last sort of maybe three months that I've actually thought yeah I, I can do this I'm I am doing it and you know and I'm doing it well <laughs> um so yeah it, it is really hard with the military but I suppose also it, it does force you to do other things come out of your comfort zone yeah no military life it does it gets in the way but also it sort of encourages us so the RAF has their um motto which is in latin and i'm not going to try and say that <laughs> but translated it's from through adversity to the stars which is kind of a motto in our marriage as well because there's an awful lot of adversity and we end up doing an awful lot of um getting through deployments and operations um and it is a tough one but actually um it's worth it. And you've got to sort of, you know, play your way through this military life and you find yourself doing these things that you probably wouldn't necessarily do if you weren't married to somebody in the military, for example, starting your own business. And I love my business and it sounds like you love yours too, yeah. but what is it in particular that you like best about it? I love when people contact me and they sort of say, I don't know, um, I really like this word in or this is how I feel, but I don't know, you know, what can you do? And, you know, hands up, I am not a graphic designer. Um, I buy a lot of my, um, especially a lot of the pictures and, um, you know, some fonts I'll buy in, especially for a customer, obviously with commercial licenses, because yeah, I'm not, because <laughs> I'm not a graphic designer. Um, but I love putting something together for somebody and then going, hey, you know, th this is, and they're like, oh my, you know, that's what I was thinking. So I kind of, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a really creative person, but actually it's given me that like, well, maybe I am quite creative, really. It's really funny because obviously a lot of my equipment is um, very techy. <laughs> I am not very techy at all. Our new printer is um, absolutely amazing. It, it prints onto vinyl so I can, you know, print people's logos and things like that. I'm so scared of it. It's unreal. <laughs> I'm getting there, though. I am getting there. Um, Probably not a good selling point to anybody. I, I can work it and it works really well, but yeah, I'm always very frightened of um Yeah, so I, yeah, I think that's the thing. I do love making people's items. It's probably not, it takes me a long, you know, I like to go backwards and forwards making sure I'm doing the right thing as well. So I probably sometimes need to not do that so much. <laughs> but I like that then, you know, the customers end up with what they want really, rather than me saying this is what you're going to have. I think that kind of hopefully sets me apart from some other companies that real personal touch I suppose and that's really important it makes such a difference when you are building your business because people like to work with people they don't want to work with big corporates and that personal touch um I like it I think it's really important and the fact that you're doing it and it's commercially sound and people are happy with the work just says it all really um I love your Instagram everybody needs to go for your Instagram because it's full of the most amazing pictures Thank you. Some of them are a bit cheeky, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but they're really good fun. And also for a girl who um, has bodged together a podcast series and learnt it as she has gone, it is completely fine that anybody in business <laughs> is, everybody is learning their way. We are all winging it. So don't be, um, if anybody's out there who's got a new printer, has got a new bit of kit, just give it a go. You can't really break it yeah. too much um, <laughs> in theory. So just go for it because everybody's learned this stuff and everybody has to learn it. And we, as business owners, we are the multi hyphen and we have to do all these little things. We have to learn all these little things. And that's part of the joy of running a business. So you mentioned before about your daughter yeah. and how she is the inspiration of your company. Yeah. You have a charitable element um, to how you're making a profit and you're raising funds for the CDLS Foundation. Yeah. So can you tell me about the work that they do and why it's really important for you to support them? Yeah. So um, Emma was, uh, wasn't diagnosed until she was three and it was actually through the foundation. They run conferences twice a year throughout the UK and Ireland. Um, it's run completely by volunteers um, and there is one, uh, well, there's one paid employee. She's um, the office administrator uh, who is an absolute diamond. I don't know how she does the job, to be honest. Um, so yeah, they kind of put families together, they put on talks and they um, they actually, we have consults with um, doctors as well um, so, that work in the NHS, but they part of the, uh, the foundation. Um, and um, so, yeah, a doctor from Edinburgh Children's Hospital actually diagnosed Emma clinically. Um, and um, we have advice from other doctors about um, different health problems that she has. 
Uh, so it's really important, but because they're so small, they get no funding from outside. It's basically the families, I think there's um, about 300 to 400 families um, in the UK that have a child affected with um, cornea interlang. So it's really rare. So it's kind of all of us helping them keep going. There wasn't anybody producing merchandise for them. Um, and I would love to be able to do it for free, but I can't afford to. Um, so we had a chat to them um, and they're happy for us to use obviously their logo on their, you know, on their products. We try and keep to the same colours, which are purple for CDLS, sometimes green, sometimes white, because they're the colours associated as well. Um, and for every item we sell that with the CDLS logo on it, uh, we don't donate a pound to the charity. So it's not masses of money, but it gets awareness out there as well. Um, because, you know, we still go to some appointments where um, the doctors have never heard of it or they don't want to listen about it. <laughs> so, it, yeah, you know, I've got a T-shirt that says Advocate Like a Mother, and it's got a very strong woman on the front with um, a CDLS tattoo on her arm. Um, sometimes that might come across as a bit of aggressive, but, um, yeah, I think <laughs> that gets my point across when I'm there. Yeah, we, I suppose we support them as much as we can with getting those donations and getting awareness, really. Um, and like I said, I wish I could do more, but I can't afford to. <laughs> And you built it into a business, which is really important. And um, in the series two, I talked to Asali about how she's built charities into her um, business and how she donates to them. And it's really important and, and, and spreading awareness. So if there was one thing that you wanted to tell everybody about the syndrome, then um, what would it be? Um, that they are, they are the most amazing children who absolutely battle on through all their complications. And they are so happy generally. Um, you know they've always got an amazing smile yeah just have a google <laughs> have a google of cornelia de lang syndrome and um yeah just making one person aware really you know you might be a nurse or a doctor or a patient in a waiting room and think oh, you know i recognize that face because they do look very similar so yeah i did a little bit of reading about it before i chatted to you because i like to know my guests inside and out and it's it's such a it's a very rare thing to have and there isn't much awareness about it so I think what you're doing is really important and fair play to you does Emma still have stickers on her wheelchair she does yeah they're still there <laughs> she's not too grown up for that yet um, no. and are you still designing them for her yeah um so uh, they're actually still the ones that she had originally are still there so it's just her name and there's a fairy and a butterfly and we've done stickers for the car as well which are quite cute so if anyone needs disability stickers again you know, if you can't find what you're after, I will make it for you. <laughs> so Emma's got a princess in a wheelchair on the back of our car. Wheelchair person with a with a hat on, <laughs> with a crown on. Um, it says princess on board. Yeah, well, that's kind of our thing, really. You know, you think it, these will print it. So I love that. My mum's in a wheelchair and I'm going to get her some stickers. <laughs> I'm not sure how well that will go down. Um, but, you know, Christmas is coming. So <laughs> you might just have to make it. <laughs> So this podcast is mostly about business and the positives of military life. Yeah. You are in your first year. What business tips have you learned in this first year that you'd like to pass on to somebody? Probably don't do what we did, which was just go, go with it. I mean, in some ways that's quite good because we didn't really have a business plan. Well, we had no business plan. We just bought the stuff to do Emma's wheelchair and went from there. Um, so I think you always need to have a good idea that you believe in. <laughs> There's no point going with it and thinking, oh, I don't know. This is, you know. Um, yeah, always have a, but maybe um, keep on top of your books because I've just done my first year's accounts and just sat through, you know, loads of receipts and invoices. Don't do that. Yeah, I should have known that from being self-employed previously. You know, don't do that. You need to do it every week or month. Try and be organized. Find out what your customers want as well, uh, which with me is kind of tricky because I don't make a product as such. I make what people want. So, you know, that can be quite hard marketing yourself because. I don't have a, here you go, here's a such and such, you know. So it's all very varied. So, that, you know, that can maybe be quite tricky. You know, I do sometimes think, oh, should I have just had one product? Should I have just gone with a T-shirt with a certain quote on it? But that would be a bit boring, I think. I like I like a bit of variety. And it's true, when you're working your business every day, you don't want it to be boring. Um, and also it's your own business, so you can actually do what you want. But there has to be an element of being organised and there has to be yes. an element. Yeah of not just providing stuff for the sake of providing stuff because yeah. people do need to buy it. And that's yeah. quite, a, it's quite yeah. a delicate balance. Yeah. And I, I don't, um, I know, you know, sometimes that that's harder for customers. Well, I don't hold stock. 
I have a few random pieces, but you know, so people do have to wait for their items because I have to order them in and then obviously produce them for them. But um, yeah, I didn't want to hoard loads of things because financially that's not great. Obviously, living in a quarter that's not great because there was absolutely nowhere to store anything extra. Yeah, but it all comes down to organisation, and obviously we've learned a lot of that along the way of you know making sure we are organised. You know, I have I try and have set days for admin now and set days for um, you know when I go to the post office and all that, you know, all that kind of thing. So you have to kind of make sure you can fit that into your life, I suppose, which is tricky with deployments and children, <laughs> dogs. <laughs> and it's probably the best way to do it actually to segregate your week in that way and to have a sort of set time for certain things. And and then if it all goes crazy with a dog or a child or a deployment, you can shuffle stuff, Yeah, um, which is the joy of self-employment. So you are living in a married quarter and you're running a business as a military spouse. Um, but what have been the highs and the lows of running a business so far? Um, highs are probably getting that customer feedback, I think. Um, you know, creating something that somebody loves that they haven't been able to get elsewhere or finding a network of people as well. That's been a real high because um, I was on a bit of a low at, at the end of the last year, beginning of this year. Emma's got quite a lot of health problems. There's a few more just come up. Um, and you kind of do that whole, oh, is it worth it? Do I keep going? You know, um, and I found, um, you know, a lovely group of uh, people on Facebook and um, Instagram. And, you know, obviously yourself is <laughs> being one of those um, military mums in business who have been amazing as well. You know, they've really picked me up over the last couple of months, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely been high, you know, networking. Um, like, well, I think I've covered loads in that as well is, you know, it is really hard you know, the, the military side, the health side for Emma, um, you know, that all obviously falls on and, you, you know, you think I'm tired, you know, but I've still got work to do. I want to take on more customers, but I can't take on more customers, you know, but I think now, um, and it's that self-belief as well. I think you just have to believe in what you're doing. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, I am there now and yeah, I suppose that's my, that's probably my biggest high of the year, actually finding other people that feel the same and all actually encouraging each other to, yeah, we can do this. We've got this. You know, that that's probably, yeah, the biggest high of the year. And you're right. There's a huge community and there's loads of us slogging away in um, our Magnolia Mary quarters um, who want to look after each other and want to support each other. And it's not a competitive world at all. We just want to make sure that everybody can achieve what they want to achieve. And because we, I've gone through hard times and I've learned things the hard way. Um, and it would be silly for somebody else to go through that as well. Yeah. might as well make it a little bit easier for them so yeah. it's a great place it's a great community um there's loads of there's quite a few communities on facebook that you should hunt out um and it is a place to be so now that you have found us and you have your support network what is the plan so where will bees be in five years time um in five years time it would be really nice actually to maybe i won't be working at home anymore maybe i will have a little space maybe a lot of that will depend on obviously Emma because um, it is really tricky juggling appointments and things anyway. So being at home is good for that. I'd like to be quite, I suppose, well known, you know, people think, oh yeah, let's, you know, I need a t-shirt or we need work stuff, you know, or camp to say, oh, actually, you know, we need to be t-shirts, you know, <laughs> let's go with a local, you know, spouse instead. Yeah. So I'd like to be me still, still providing that, um, that customer service, I suppose, but hopefully on a bigger scale, you know, it would be nice to, maybe financially contribute towards the household again <laughs> so we're reaching the end but before we go I always make my poor suffering guests go through the quick five questions they're not too painful I promise it'll be okay are you ready <laughs> I am but I'm not very quick am I <laughs> don't worry it's going to be an interesting answer no matter what you say so do not worry so the first one is who would you most like to hear from on the independent spouse podcast series there's so many inspiring ladies that I've met as well well virtually met um claire from claire's candles you know she's got an amazing story to tell um i don't know if she's <laughs> she's booked on at all but i think she'd be amazing too for people to listen to definitely so i found claire on instagram i've never met her either even though i think she's only down the road um and i bought some of her candles and they have changed my life and saved me an absolute fortune um my husband's a little bit happy that I know. <laughs> but yes, somebody else that needs to check out. I will be emailing her for series four. Gosh, series four, um, which I will add to my list. 
The next one is that the independent spouse is all about inspiring people and the positives of military life. So how do you stay inspired? Gin and coffee, mostly. <laughs> um, it is a really tricky one because, it, like I say, it has been a really hard time at the moment with Em. Um, Matt is home at the moment, which is good. Um, yeah, gin and coffee probably would be my answer to that. Um, <laughs> keeps me going and inspired. Um, just customers as well customers coming back and asking looking you know just that general backwards and forwards really it's just nice to hear nice things from people yeah um and if you are running a business make sure you ask people for that so then you yeah. can add it to your social media your website it's really important testimonials but Help i do need to do i've not done that yet <laughs> i've got a whole list that's what I do, a word document i just copy and paste her yeah yeah do that and then the very last one is what would you tell a military partner who wants to start their own online business? I, I suppose I covered it a little bit earlier. Make sure that you kind of believe in what you're doing. That Not that there's competition, but it's really hard if you're setting something up in an area where everyone's doing the same because you kind of, you know, that will be tricky. Even if you're selling online, you're still going to be locally. Yeah, just make sure you've got a good idea and a plan and kind of go with it. Research it a little bit as well make sure you know yeah just make sure you know your stuff I suppose but you will learn a lot along the way as well don't don't think you need to know everything when you start off because you don't nobody knows anything I think everybody no. is still definitely learning no. <laughs> what they're doing. um and there's a load of free printables on the independence Pass website that help with the first steps of starting your business whether it's a good idea whether you should go for it whether it'll fit with your military life so I would recommend downloading that filling it in it might be quite helpful um Andrea, that is the end of the interview. I have loved talking to you, hearing about Emma and her amazing wheelchair stickers. I hope she starts to feel a bit better. Give her a little squeeze from me um, and wish her all of the luck in the world and well done for creating a brilliant business that does nice, happy things. If I want to get some merchandise for you um, or want to follow you on your Instagram, where can I find you? Yeah, so I'm on Facebook, which is Bees Clothing Vinyl and Decals which is a mouthful. We uh, Instagram is uh, Bees Clothing and Gifts and our website is um, beesclothingandgifts.co.uk. Andrea, thank you so much for talking to me. Fair play on a brilliant first year and I'm excited to see where you go and to follow you along on your little business journey. Thank you. Yet again, another massive thank you to Andrea for today's episode. Do pop over to Instagram to see what she's up to you will not be disappointed. And while you're there, head over to the Independent Spouse Instagram feed where you will find more information about next week's virtual networking event. Virtual networking is a free online event for military spouses running their own business. You'll get access to other military spouses and partners running their business from all over the world. Come and join us next week. It is completely free, it is focused, and I promise you, you'll get something out of it. Be brave, take that step, come and sign up for some virtual networking. Head over to www.theindependentspouse.co.uk for more information about the virtual networking, along with those free business printables that I mentioned earlier to download and fill out. There's also a load of blogs, a load of videos, and a lot of help for you and your Magnolia Walled business. So apart from that event, I will also be back next week with another episode. This time it is with the lovely Gillian from Gillian Jones Designs. So I shall see you then.